It is largely accepted within mainstream archaeology that modern civilization started with Iraq, within what we now call Mesopotamia. Iraq is currently accepted as the longest surviving continuous area of civilization anywhere on Earth. The question is, how did this very ancient culture excel so successfully within their surrounding environment? How did they develop such sophisticated methods of survival at such a primitive time in our history? There actually exists a series of figurines made by unknown people that predated the Sumerian culture by some magnitude, known as the Ubadian people. Were these the source of Sumerian wisdom? The only problem is that the figures are representative of a race of reptilians. A discovery at the Al Ubaid archaeological site, where many very ancient artifacts were found, depicting humanoid figures with lizard characteristics. The origins of the Ubadian people is unknown. Their entire existence is a huge mystery to mainstream history, and although this race of people may in all possibility be the pioneers for modern civilization, very little is known about them. They apparently lived in large village settlements within mud brick houses. They developed architecture, agriculture, and farmed the land using irrigation. Their domestic architecture involved large houses, open courtyards, paved streets, even food processing equipment. Some of these villages began to develop into towns, temples began to appear, as well as monumental buildings, such as in Eridu, Ur, and Uruk, once the capitals of the Sumerian civilization. Many of the figurines exhibit different postures, and in most cases they appear to be wearing a curious helmet of some kind, and have some form of padding around the shoulders. Other figurines were found to be holding staffs, or a scepter, possibly as a symbol of their status amongst the group. Each figurine was clearly intended to represent a unique individual. Some female figurines were even discovered holding babies, with the child also represented as a reptilian creature. Just who were the Obadian people? Were these figures intended to represent tribe members? More research into their appearance and information surrounding the origins of their knowledge is clearly needed. We will, of course, keep you posted on any future developments regarding this mysterious, valuable, and quite possibly reptilian tribe. During excavations within the Kiziltipi district of southeastern Mardin in southeast Turkey, a marvelous, miraculous, and to this day unexplained artifact was discovered. A pure nugget of historical gold, ticking all the boxes of desirability when it comes to our research here at Mystery History. The wheel is by far the most important invention man has ever realized, and it is indeed recognized as such the world over. The official attested account for the origin of the wheel is given to the late Aceramic Neolithic between 9500 to 6500 BCE and could be seen in conjunction with other technological advances as that which gave rise to the early Bronze Age. The official kept academic record regarding the evolution of the wheel is largely accepted as follows. 4500 to 3300 BCE, Chalcolithic era, invention of the potter's wheel. 3300 to 2200 BCE, early Bronze Age. 2200 to 1550 BCE, middle Bronze Age, invention of the spoked wheel and the chariot. When, on occasion, we are confronted with artifacts reluctantly accepted by these same academic fields of study as authentic, demonstrating through their existence that mainstream paradigm is to be vastly incorrect, we feel a mix of frustration and vindication. We also strongly feel that it is imperative we share such finds with one another to further all of our understandings regarding our past to hopefully break the spell slowly cast over years of incorrect and largely incomplete information. According to the culture and tourism director of Marden, Davut Belikte, the car is like a copy of cars today. He also pointed out that the shape of this ancient toy resembles that of a tractor. Belikte revealed that strange toy dolls and whistles, also made of stone, were also found at the site. We believe that the whistles and dolls to be well over 5,000 to 6,000 years old, with the whistles still in working condition," he said. Along with these ancient figurines, 
was also a mysterious stone tablet, inscribed with an ancient text. After extensive historical analysis, the writing on the 5 cm long stone was deemed to be that of an ancient title deed. The content of the deed refers to a fruit garden and the fruit trees within, which are to be split between the three sons of the owner. Clearly, the behavior of people far more advanced than that of Stone Age people, a premise we are expected to believe is accurate. Belicte has confirmed that comprehensive information on the two finds will be provided soon. Is this little ancient toy car perhaps the earliest evidence of the wheel we will ever find? Or is it just the tip of an evidential iceberg of a secret far larger? The figurines of Ocambaro, a series of artistically driven figurines that perplex all who have the opportunity to examine them. They were discovered by German Waldemar Julstrold in July of 1944 within Acambaro, Mexico. They represent, among other things, unknown camels, animals, enormous ancient reptiles, and possibly even aliens. Various examples from the collection are currently on public display at the Museum of Acambaro. Charles Hapgood, historian of science at Keene College in New Hampshire, best known for his discoveries regarding the Piri Reis maps and ancient Antarctica, has also supported the claim that the figurines are genuine ancient artifacts, which show extinct animals, miniature goblin-esque creatures, and quite possibly ancient extraterrestrial beings. Due to these claims, and the many skeptics who were ferociously arguing against such a posit, Official radiocarbon dating was arranged and conducted in the late 60s, using organic materials from their surfaces. However, to academia's chagrin, the results indicated dates of around 6,500 years old, this based on three samples. Yet, amazingly, the results were ignored in favor of persistence, that they are nothing but modern souvenirs, made for the tourist industry. None of the publicly displayed examples resemble any known extinct dinosaur. Instead, it is suggested that they are representations of once living animals. Although the carbon dating had proven their authenticity, skeptics were still arguing that they were a modern hoax. A few years later, thermoluminescent tests were agreed upon by all, as being sufficient enough to establish the figure's approximate date of manufacture. So, in 1972, Froelich Ramey of Pennsylvania Museum conducted this analysis. He also obtained dates of well over 4,500 years. Indeed, even their excavation was observed by a trained archaeologist known as Charles de Peso. It seems that no matter what certain individuals try in their attempts to discredit the authenticity of the Acambaro figures, all they seem to accomplish is validating them further. Although some of the more compelling figures have disappeared over the years, the vast portion of these mysterious and perplexing artifacts remain on public display. Who made the Acambaro figures? What do most of them depict? With attitudes as they are within mainstream academia, it's a battle to establish the facts surrounding such relics. A battle we are slowly winning. Alexander the Great was a member of the Arjad dynasty. He was born in Pella, central Macedonia in Greece in the year 356 BC. He succeeded his father Philip II to the throne at the age of just 20 and spent most of his ruling life on continuous military campaigns through Asia and Northeast Africa. In just 10 years, by the age of 30, he had successfully created one of the largest empires of the ancient world, stretching from Greece to India. Undefeated in battle, he is widely considered history's most successful military commander. The final resting place of this Macedonian king is one of the greatest mysteries of ancient history. No one has apparently been able to locate any evidence to suggest where he could have been buried. Recently, however, archaeologists claims that the actual tomb of Alexander was discovered and that this discovery was blocked by the Greek and Egyptian governments and has been ever since. Alexander died in a mysterious death at the age of 32 in Babylon in 323 BC. He had been holding a memorial feast to honor the passing of a close friend when he suddenly suffered intense pain and collapsed. He was taken to his bedchamber where, after days of agony, he fell into a coma and died. Scholars still debate the cause of death. 
Alexander was embalmed and a golden chariot was built to transfer his body to the sanctuary of Amon. When the procession made it to the border between Syria and Egypt, it was met by Ptolemy, who stole the body. Its location along with all artifacts ever since have remained a mystery. In the early 1980s, a man named Russell Burroughs claimed he stumbled upon a hidden cave somewhere near Olney. He apparently found human remains, metal weapons, and an ancient language carved into gold tablets. Stranger still, the language was Middle Eastern and European in origin, and not from any known American Indian culture. What was astonishing about this apparent discovery was the fact that many artifacts recovered from the site strongly suggested that they were connected to the tomb of Alexander. The reason he claims his find has been covered up was realized by Virginia Hurrigan and Harry Hubbard, who upon deciphering the writings and cataloging the artifacts realized that they detailed numerous close encounters with extraterrestrial life, apparently including a specific species of reptilians. Their work, which they maintain possession of, has been disclosed across the web, with a large selection of photographic studies of said objects. Are the powers that be hiding the fact that past rulers throughout history have been in contact with beings from other planets? Many have claimed through the subsequent years that Russell Burroughs' artifacts are frauds, and he still refuses to reveal the location of the hidden cave. However, it could also be seen as a smokescreen, obscuring from public view a real find of significant historical importance. Around the same time, many archaeologists came forward claiming Liana Suvalzi to have found the elusive tomb just where it should have been all along. Yet they also claim that her discoveries were indeed covered up, and it would seem with the help of Russell Burroughs' debunked find, it was successfully concealed from the world. Just what could there be in this tomb that is such a threat to modern understanding? What could be so earth-shaking that it would lead to an international cover-up? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.